Now, in these oceans, these where these early um, multicellular creatures were, were evolving and, and expanding and growing and uh, moving into new niches, we find a lot of, in the Grand Canyon especially, we find a lot of trace fossils. These are here, these are trace fossils of uh, trilobites moving through the mud and the sand. And uh, where's, uh, where you guys are? We saw this very rock with backpacks on our back, and Alan and Jerry and I were backpacking right past this rock a few days ago. Um, and we find a lot of worm burrows. A lot of creatures in these early oceans were what we call deposit feeders. They were moving around in the sediment, bulldozing through the sediment, and, and chewing up the sediment, spitting out what they didn't want, keeping what they didn't want. We find a lot of these kinds of creatures in the Cambrian formations of, of Grand Canyon. Now, we are missing um, a huge chunk of time. We're missing two whole time periods and a good portion of a third. Around 200 million years is what it amounts to. Nowhere on the Colorado Plateau do we find sediments from the Ordovician or the Silurian or most of the Devonian. By the late Devonian, this should actually be 370 million years ago. And by the way, I want to let you know, these are all maps done uh, for Ron Lakey uh, from NAU here did these, and they're just fantastic maps based on some of the most current research we have. You can see we're still here at the edge of, uh, of this sort of lowland now, and uh, still in this shallow sea. In the Devonian, we're starting to find some really, really interesting fossils. There are not very many Devonian sediments on the Colorado Plateau at all. And excuse me for how dark this is. In Grand Canyon, the Devonian is represented by oh, this layer right here at the base of this cliff called the Temple Butte Formation. Now we have a little bit of Temple View right here on Mount Eldon. If you go around the eastern side of Mount Eldon, you will, there is a little bit, a tiny little pocket of sediment in which they have discovered an amazing fauna, amazing group of fish, early fish. The Devonian is known as the Age of Fishes. And this is a drawing done by Dave Elliott, again at Northern Arizona University. He's a Devonian fish expert. You can see there's a fish that did not look like modern fish. Fish had appeared earlier, as probably as early as the Ordovician, uh, but and they're, and they're expanding tremendously in the uh, in the Devonian. You had fish with armor plates on them. This little guy here is only about six to eight inches long. This is Eldenosteus, and he's only known from Mount Eldon right here on Flystaff. He had this uh, serrated bone in his jaw that served as a um, showed he was a predator. It served as a way to to chop up other critters, and then kind of an interesting head plate here that um, where he, he would move, it was almost like a little ball and socket joint between the, the front part of him and the back part of him. But you can see these are not modern looking fish at all. Um, and as these fish are, are evolving and um, uh, uh, expanding towards, towards modern creatures, some of them during the Devonian begin to actually move up onto land. We find the first amphibians, the first creatures actually moved up onto land, out of the oceans, in the late Devonian. We don't have a record of this from the Colorado Plateau, but these early amphibians will start to see a, a little bit later in the, the Colorado Plateau sediments. Now, by about 300 million years ago, in a time period called the Mississippian, this is what our continent would have looked like then. You notice where the equator is, okay? Our continent is continually moving during this time. You have to remember that we're not, that we're not just staying right where we are now. We don't have the same position we have now. The outline is there to give you a, a sense of where things were. But we were sort of turned on our side, and Arizona and, and the whole Colorado Plateau region was really close to the equator. Notice here the green shows a shallow ocean stretching essentially across the U.S. There were mountain ranges in the, in the Nevada area and then the beginning of the Appalachians over here. I love this one, Africa approaching. It's a <laughs> sense of inevitability. <laughs> you know, you just don't want to be there in a few more million years. So in this ocean, we start to find, and we find a fantastic record of this ocean here in Grand Canyon. And, and the thing to remember is that it was the same ocean over here as all the way across here. So. Yes, it lasted for many millions of years, but here in Grand Canyon, again, there's a little bit of this up in, in uh, Dinosaur National Monument, but the best record, again, Grand Canyon, and it's exposed as this beautiful rose-colored cliff called the Red Wall Limestone. 
Mississippi and Age limestone is about five to six hundred feet thick. And in this formation, which is actually silver, not rose, it's only painted on the outside, we find uh, remains of a very different kind of ocean than we were finding back in the Cambrian, earlier in, the, in that Paleozoic period. Here are some pieces, little stem pieces of a creature called a crinoid, commonly called a sea lily. It's not a plant at all, it's actually an animal related to sea stars, sand dollars, uh, sea urchins, and the kind of them. And this is what uh, they looked like when they were whole, and I'll be honest with you, this did not come from Colorado Plateau. I think this came from somewhere in Indiana as well. <laughs> but I wanted to show you what a, a full crime would look like. Here are those stem pieces, and then these beautiful sort of anemone-like head at the top that would wave around in the water and, and feed on um, critters out of the water. What you start finding, this is a horn coral, a solitary coral that didn't form reefs uh, per se, like we have today, but would grow more of a solitary on the ocean floor. A beautiful, uh, this is a bryozoan here, um, sort of a latticework bryozoan, a uh, colonial organism, little tiny, tiny critters that would live in holes next to these, this latticework, and again, filter things out of the water. What we're finding is that instead of critters bulldozing through the sediment, the deposit feeders, these guys are filter feeders. They're filtering things out of the water. This tells us something really specific about this ocean clear, warm, um, probably fairly shallow, probably less than about 300 feet in those places, um, at least where they were living. And we find one really spectacular fossil. This is a photograph from Dave Edwards, who's a local photographer. Um, this is a nautiloid, which is a modern, uh, related to modern squid and octopus, and also related to the ammonites from the age of dinosaurs. And it's a neat thing you can see here. Um, all of these little curved lines are walls that separate the animal into various chambers. And here is a single tube called the siphuncle that uh, connects the chambers and it can regulate the amount of, of gas or essentially air in the various chambers for flotation. So we go up and down in the water. This guy is a predator. And we found them about three feet long in Grand Canyon. If this is the same genus as um, other places, they found one in Arkansas that was eight feet long. So these, these guys got pretty big. This is a reconstruction of, of perhaps what this Mississippian sea might have looked like stretching all the way across the Colorado Plateau. Forests of crinoids waving and these uh, nautiloids shooting here and there. Uh, trilobites still digging around in the sediment or swimming around. We've got uh, those solitary horn corals and sponges. All of these things that tell us this was a clear, warm, shallow, uh, sort of tropical style ocean. Actually, a great place to snorkel, essentially, is, is what you would have. You could have snorkeled all the way across the, the US, which I think is pretty cool. Now, by, the, by about 300, a little bit less, maybe 280 million years ago, like what we call Pennsylvania period, notice how things have changed. Okay, here's Arizona. And you've got over here in, in uh, uh, the Denver area and over in western Colorado, um, you have two long mountain ranges. These are what we call the ancestral Rockies. These were uplifted in part due to a collision, well, essentially due to a collision between two pieces of the Earth's crust further to the east. But these mountain ranges started shedding sediment. Rivers started flowing off these mountain ranges out to the west. And we start seeing evidence of that across the Colorado Plateau. Now, the other thing I want to point out is this thing right here. The Paradox Basin, this big basin at the base of the Uncompahgre Mountains there. And this, I'll talk about it in a second, but keep that, uh, that ocean, sort of arm of the ocean in mind. It's a, it's a partly enclosed, and at times completely enclosed, arm of the ocean. And we have some very interesting fossils coming out of that region. So Pennsylvanian aged rocks, again, a little bit up in Dinosaur National Monument, over here in the Canyonlands region, and again, beautifully in Grand Canyon, and then the southern edge of the plateau. Really interesting um, sharks being found, a huge shark uh, fauna down there on the southern edge of the plateau near Payson. In the Grand Canyon region, the Supai group here, the base of the Supai group, you know, are these uh, sandstones and shales that have been eroding off of those mountains further to the, to the east and uh, for